Good morning everybody. Welcome to the Allergy Symposium which is an educational initiative on diagnosis and management of allergic rhinitis. All over the world allergic diseases are increasing day by day. Hence it is very important to have a thorough knowledge of the anatomy of the nasal structures, the various etiopathogenesis, history taking, proper evaluation of allergens, pulmonary function tests, treatment of allergic rhinitis and what are the allergen avoidance measures. A systematic knowledge is very essential. I am Dr. Lakshmi P, a senior consultant ENT surgeon practicing at Skin Cosmetic ENT Care Center and at Excel Care and uh, Sagar Apollo Hospitals. These are the various positions which I have held in the past. We have divided into various chapters to understand the different aspects of allergy. The first chapter includes introduction to allergic rhinitis, various terminologies, the prevalence and the other allergic diseases associated with it. What are the definitions? What do you mean by allergy? Allergy is a hypersensitive reaction of the immune system to a typically harmless substance in the environment or it is an altered or an untoward reaction experienced by few subjects to otherwise harmless substances. An allergen is a substance that causes the allergic reaction such as dust mite or pollen. Allergic rhinitis is an inflammation of the nasal passages caused by an allergic reaction mainly due to air bore aller allergens. History Allergy is a very old disease. Way back in the 3300 BC, uh, allergic disease was reported. King Menes of Egypt died due to a severe anaphylactic reaction following a vast sting. Pronitz and Kustner explained the famous reaction, the PK reaction way back in 1921. Globally, there is an alarming increase in allergic diseases in the last 150 years. Hay fever has been on constant rise from the end of 19th century. Asthma prevalence among children has been con continuously increasing. Peanut allergy has uh, increased dramatically from the end of 19th uh, or 20th century. Why? Why is this change? More and more time spent indoors, introduction of television and air conditioning, decrease in the physical activity of an individual and increase in the public hygiene which is called hygiene hypothesis and introduction of newer and newer varieties of food such as peanut butter and other peanut derived products. A naive individual can develop uh, allergic symptoms when he is exposed to epigenetic factors in the prenatal period such as maternal smoking, excessive exposure to pollutants etc. A gene environment combination makes an in a naive individual into an allergic individual. So, what is the pathophysiology of this allergy? An allergen enters the body when there is a breach in the mucous membrane in the, in the upper aerodigestive tract skin and the mucous membrane of the nasal cavity. When the allergen enters, it, it goes into the submucosal tissues where it is taken up by the antigen presenting cell or the dendritic cell. Here from there it is uh, broken up into the main protein of the allergen is broken up into epitopes and it is given up into the MH2 cells. The MH2 cells then migrate to the regional lymph nodes where it gets activated and differentiate into TH2 cells. Then B cells also recognize the Th2 cells and gets differentiated into plasma cells through the and there is increased production of IgE. So, let us look at this diagrammatic representation. The star cell showing is the dendritic cell which takes up the protein allergen and breaks up into epitopes and then it is presented onto the regional lymph node where the T cell receptor cell converts it into the Th2 cells. Sim simultaneously, the B cells are activated and that commands the plasma cells to produce IgE. This IgE is a Y shaped molecule and it gets hooked on to the surface of the mast cell through its FC1 receptor. So, initial exposure results in plasma cell releasing the IgE antibodies uh, which circulate in the blood and in the lymphatic system and then they get hooked on to the surface of the mast cell that is called initial exposure. Following a repeated exposure, the continuous uh, the cross linking of the allergen happens to the antibody complex that is IgE complex and resulting in coupling and degranulation of the mast cells. The release of chemo uh, chemical mediators such as histamine, kinins, serotonin, prostaglandins, leukotrienes, platelet activating factor and the chemotactic factor happens after degranulation of the mast cells. So, what the, we have to know about other allergic diseases also. When an individual suffers from severe form of allergic rhinitis, it is very important to uh, take the history whether they have conjunctival allergy in the form of redness, itching, etcetera, 
whether they suffer from excessive rhinorrhea, sneezing, nasal itching, blocked nose, whether they have throat irritation, any uh, blocked ears and uh, symptoms suggestive of eustachian catarrh due to allergy, whether they have tightness in the chest, whether they had any previous history of uh, skin allergy including atopic dermatitis, they, whether they get recurrent attacks of urticaria and whether the child has any allergy to any food substances etc is extremely important. Other allergic diseases are asthma and atopic dermatitis. Asthma is a heterogeneous disease with symptoms of airway obstruction resulting in wheezing, dry cough etc as a result of underlying airway inflammation. It can um, begin at any age, not all wheezers will develop an asthma. Atopic dermatitis is a chronic relapsing inflammatory skin disorder also called eczema in children and it can also cause lichenifoid lesions in adults. It occurs over the facial and extensor aspects in young children and on the flexural aspects in adults. Uh, coming to the food allergy, uh, it is an immune mediated aberrant reaction after consumption of a food or a food additive. It can be Ig or non-Ig mediated. Sensitization occurs by either oral ingestion or by contact with the food substance. Reactions usually occur within 2 hours after consumption. Sometimes it can occur within few minutes after consumption of the allergic substance. The common allergens being gluten, soya, peanut, fish, mustard, certain types of uh, eggs and celery. Angioedema can affect deeper tissue layers and it is often associated in about 40 percent of articarial patients. Anaphylaxis is another serious uh, systemic reaction which progresses rapidly after exposure to an allergen and sometimes it can be life threatening. It is very important to diagnose anaphylaxis and a rapid inst uh, institution of treatment is very very important. There are certain diagnostic criteria for us to make a diagnosis of uh, anaphylaxis. At least two or more of the following after exposure to an allergen should symptoms happen such as skin or mucosal changes, feeling, feeling of flushing and hotness in the skin followed by articarial rashes, signs or symptoms of respiratory compromise such as difficulty in breathing or breathlessness, reduced blood pressure or end organ function such as syncope, or persistent GI symptoms such as retching, nausea and vomiting. At least two of the symptoms should be there for us to make a diagnosis of anaphylaxis. We should know about the term atopic march. Not all individuals who have allergic rhinitis will develop into an atopic march. Some children born at birth, uh, they develop a extremely dry skin and that progresses to a condition called atopic dermatitis which occurs in the first few weeks or months of life. A child who has atopic dermatitis in, in early infancy after in introduction of formula feeds or due after weaning, if the child develops food allergy then it can also progress. If the food allergy is also not halted at an early stage, the child can develop a allergic rhinitis by the age of 3 years and if the symptoms persist, the same child can progress into developing an asthma. This progression of symptoms is called atopic march. Thank you.